I'm Reed Deming, and you're on the scene with S18 Scene. I'm Brennan. I'm here at Goga Studios. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Middlestad, and we're here at the Maison European Restaurant. I'm Laura, and I'm at the Cove. And I'm James. I'm here at Big Loose Pizza. I'm Juliana Caitlin with S18 Scene, and I'm here at Yummy Berry Frozen Yogurt. Hey, this is Kyle with S18 Scene. We're checking out Young Chefs Academy in Stone Oak. And you're on the scene with, with S18 Scene. scene. I'm James Brown with S18 Scene, and we're here at Big Loose Pizza where the pizza's so big, it comes with instructions on how to eat it. But that doesn't matter, because I've been preparing for three days for this. I haven't ate. I'm about to take this pizza down. Come check it out. And I'm here with Will and Carlo. Uh, so Will, tell us what you do. Uh, I'm one of the owners over at Big Loose Burgers. I'm an operating partner here at the pizza place. Carlo, what about you? I'm the general manager over here at Big Lou's Pizza, and also Big Lou's is in my family, so I am very proud of this restaurant, and yeah. can almost feel the fake tension. Pizza, burger, it's getting real. It's getting real over here, man. So uh, looking around, I see there's a front door over there. It's a fireplace behind us. Uh, what is this place? Where exactly are we right now? This right here was the original Big Lou's. We turned it into dining rooms and actually we're in his dining room. So can you tell us how you got involved with uh, Big Lou's? I was actually their general contractor and uh, as you'll see you know, on the other side of the restaurant it's grown tremendously. So we started down the street a little bit in a very small building and a small idea became something very big. Um, so I actually have done the construction for the family over the years. We became very close and uh, I regard them as family myself. So. That's kind of how I got tied into the whole thing, was doing some construction now and making burgers and pizza. We only had 20, inch, 20 inches and below at that time. And um, about three years later or four years later, we introduced the 37 inch. Y'all started off with like little under 20 inch pizzas, then 37 inch, then the 42 inch, then the 62. What is the biggest pizza we'll get from here? 62 inch for right now. It gets too crazy if anything bigger, but there is chance for bigger. Okay, so they have the big 62 inch pizza. What is the biggest burger that y'all have? Uh, well, our Big Lou version of the hamburger is a 12 pound, 100 ounce hamburger. It feeds about 10 to 12 people pretty easily. I know y'all have uh, different sports teams and whatnot happen. Do y'all have any special events coming up? But we've been very active in the sports community over the years. Uh, we've sponsored a lot of local youth clubs, and uh, we love to support the community. We're very uh, avid sports fans. Uh, you'll find a lot of TVs and sports uh, paraphernalia here throughout the restaurant, so we're very into our sports here at Big Lou. Okay, so um, y'all had Man vs. Food recently visit. Uh, can you tell us about that? Well, on our Man vs. Food, now everybody always coming over here and asking, how many slices did he eat? Did he eat the whole thing? What's the challenge? What do I do to get my name up on the wall, to get my picture up on the wall? Those are all the questions. Now, let me tell you. He came over here, showcased the Big Lou's 42-inch barbecue brisket pizza with my family, made it with them, and sat down and ate with them. There was no challenge, and I don't think he would have been able to finish it. Well, too bad for him, because I am going to be the first one to finish it. No help. I'm going to go do this by myself and finish it all the way. I'll see y'all back in a little bit when I'm eating that pizza. Don't listen to them, okay? I'm going to do this today. Y'all about to witness this.
hits your eye like a big pizza pie. That's amore. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's amore. From looks of things, I guess it's time for me to get to work. I'm James Brown at Big Loose Pizza. Until next time, we'll see you on the scene. Mondays on the CW. The Sid's about to hit the fan again. It's a Sid-sational. Sid-kicking. Sid-storm. Oh, Sid. Monday at 7 on the CW 35. Looking for a new place to bring the family? Well, visit Fish and Grill Restaurant today. Fish and Grill has everything under the sun when it comes to good seafood. Try some of their signature dishes, like Baja Shrimp Tacos, as well as Grilled Salmon and Ceviche Salsa. And if that's not spicy enough, hit our Salsa Bar. They have lunch specials to fit that budget. Visit us today at 1604 in Bandera. Fish and Grill Restaurant. Now that's good eating. Eight, 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 eight. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Middlestad and I'm here at the Maze Zone European Restaurant for the Spring Bazaar event. It's an opportunity for different businesses to network and grow. Let's tell you more on fashion, fun, and food. Chef Martin, thank you so much for having us. And we're going to talk about his restaurant. So tell us a little bit of your restaurant, why you have it, like what got you into the field. Well, all the time I I want to have my own business. I like cooking. That's my passion. It was part of my dream to have my own business because I like cooking also, and I see people enjoying. Uh, food, a glass of wine, and you know, it's, and have a good time. This restaurant is amazing, super extravagant. It's, the food looks amazing, also. And speaking of food, I want you. Can you tell us a little bit about your five signature dishes that you have here in front of us? Well, basically, this is a visa section. That's where my own creation. Okay. It's a uh, a portobello mushroom cognac cream sauce with a high quality cut of beef tenderloin. Does it have, I uh, usually around, has a pepper, a ground pepper crust. Okay. Uh, here we're talking about, the, the, that's my creation also, called uh, a trout aphrodisiac. Scargo, Scargo is a, uh, a friend delicacies. It's an uh, appetizer, which is um, uh, satay scargos uh, with garlic butter. Here we have fresh vegetable, very simple, not too much sauces. See, I'm not a food model, so... Do I eat all of it at once? Like, yeah, a big put, bite? Yeah. Punch, punch it with a knife, with, with a fork. Punch it with a fork and put it off. Thank you so much for having us. We're here at the Mason European Restaurant. Remember to contact them and make reservations. We're here with Susie Cabrera with Hong Kong Direct. Thank you so much for having us, Susie. Thank you for having me. Tell us what you're about. What, do you, what inspired you to do this? Absolutely. I just want to make business attire fun. I want girls to have fun wearing their clothes to work to dinner with their friends and to feel confident when they wear it. So the way that we work is that we measure you up so it's the perfect fit and we can also do consultation. So based on your skin tone we can consult, based on your hair color, so it's really personalized and we can have a lot of fun and talk about what best suits you. Here at Hong Kong Direct, make sure you get in touch with them. What is the best way for us to contact you at? Absolutely. You can check out our website at myhkd.com or look us up on Facebook. Just type in HKD. Stands for Hong Kong Direct. Perfect. Thank you so much for having us. Thank in. you. I'm 
here with Jonathan, and we're here with the positive pin. A simple way to remember to think positive is to always wear one. Absolutely, yeah. So what exactly, why, why a pin? Why a pin? Well, I always wanted something that I could look at to remember to think positive thoughts, and the little symbol, as you can see here, is a little thought bubble, and I wanted something simple, and something that I could go everywhere. So what exactly are all of these for? Are they for different organizations? Are they for one? What? Yes. I, I initially came up with the white one, and I made donation to some local charities, and then I decided I wanted to give back. So I created different colors, and I donate a portion of each sale to several different charities. Among them, um, the pink one, we have a local breast cancer nonprofit here in San Antonio called Texas Wings, run by a lady named Terry Jones, an awesome lady. Uh, we make donations to ovarian cancer awareness, to epilepsy awareness. So think positive, everyone. This is great opportunity just to spread the word of being positive Absolutely. especially with the teen life today we definitely need to stay positive with growing up and becoming who we want to be so thank you so much for having me and i'm interview. very excited about this i'll definitely have to just buy a whole bunch thanks, thanks guys <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us here at the spring bazaar networking event hey if you like us like us on facebook follow us on twitter and instagram <laughs> don't close that tab because there's more sa teen scene coming up next he had a bow and arrow. They put out an APB on Robin Hood. It looks like Starling City has a guardian angel. I want to be the person you always told me I could be. The guy in a green hood took out three armed kidnappers. Why would he do that? I don't know. Find him and you can ask. Wednesday at 7 on the CW35. Ice cream socials are so 1950s. This is 2013. I'm Juliana Caitlin with SA Teen Scene, and I'm here at Yummy Berry Frozen Yogurt, and I'll be discussing all things social media with re-dumming. Hi, I'm Juliana here with G, and we're at Yummy Berry. So I noticed, walking in the door, Yummy Berry is spelled with an I instead of Y-U-M-M-Y. Well, um, we chose the word Yumi, uh, which is Japanese for a word guitar. Um, the reason I chose that was because, you know, I play guitar, so I wanted to incorporate my name of my business with something that I really like. Uh, it's Yummy Berry. That's how we pronounce it, but it's spelled Yumi Berry. That's awesome. So looking around, this place is amazing. So what inspired you to start your own Froyo store? Um, definitely, you know, uh, when I was coming out of college, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Um, and really, with a marketing degree from UTSA, all I could really find were sales jobs. Uh, ended up going out to uh, LA for a few weeks and just seeing what, what the craze was out there. And um, saw just a Froyo store, you know, um, line out the door, stayed about 35 minutes in line to get a cup of Froyo, and it cost me about eight bucks. And that's when I knew, you know, hey, I got to get in on this before, you know, it's, it's out of here. It's the next thing we started doing was the prep work and uh, figuring out if this was something we could do. And uh, a couple months later, we had yum Yummy Berry. How hard is it to make frozen yogurt? Um, I wouldn't say it's too hard. It's a lot of fun, to be honest, because, uh, you know, you get a lot of um, freedom with what you want to do. And, uh, you know, everybody who works here, we have certain tastes. Uh, sometimes I like banana more, uh, you know, strawberry more, and you can be a little bit more heavy-handed. And our customers really see that, and that's why they come in here. Awesome. So how do you market your store? Well, we do a lot of things. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that we do is um, like social media, like you guys, uh, you know, do a lot with your your show. We do a lot of Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, one of the, our greatest things is that we uh, instead of doing like a punch card, 
or anything like that. We do a digital reward system where uh, we're able to capture our customers like uh, um, cell phone numbers, and through that we text, uh, we do you know mass texts and shoot them. Like um, well, I have a hot date. I mean, interview with Reed Deming, so I'm gonna go at him, and we're gonna go get some yogurt. Okay, sounds good. And I'm here with Reed Deming of Top 24 from X Factor. Hello, what's up? So Reed, you are definitely a big social media guru, so let's talk about some tips. Alrighty, um, honestly, when it comes to social media and it comes to interacting with other people, I mean, you gotta find your target market and then you've just gotta, you know, talk to people, connect with people. It's all about, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations and it's all about, getting to really know somebody and getting to be a part of their world. So when it comes to connecting with fans, do you limit yourselves on replying or retweeting or things like that? Honestly, I try to be uh, as consistent as possible. You know, I'll have points where I'm like, I'm like retweeting and following and replying all the time and then other times I'm really busy with, you know, schoolwork or practicing or preparing for a gig coming up and I've got to be, uh, you know, real focused on that. But all, whenever I have downtime, I'm on, I'm on my phone, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff, you know, just interacting with all my fans, because that's what happens a lot. So when it comes to school, how often and how do you balance keeping up with school or tweeting, Facebooking? Well, there have been a few times where I tweeted, I snuck a couple tweets in school, so I mean, we all do, but I mean... It's definitely been a challenge. Um, being in public school, you know, that does take up a lot of your time. It's like 7 to 3.30, you know, just eating away. And, you know, speaking of school, I do hear you go to our rival school, Lopez. You're a Bush Bulldog. Bush Bulldog. And, yeah, we got a little bit of rivalry going on here. Yeah. All right, so, I mean, back to what I was saying. It's like you've got to be able to, you know, you got to manage your time. And you got to, you know... If you work hard, anything is really possible. I mean, I've had nights where I'm up till 3 a.m., you know, working hard and getting ready for, you know, upcoming endeavors and stuff. I remember I was up, I was up until like, mm, what was it, like 12 or 1 o'clock last night, you know, just working. And, you know, that, that's, that's what I appreciate and that's what I live for is because when I'm working at this point, I'm happy because I'm doing what I love. Um, have you ever gotten any negative comments and how did you feel and how do you deal with it? I mean, you're going to get negative comments being in this business. I don't know any artist out there. I mean, let's just take Justin Bieber for a perfect example. He, his following is so huge. He has so many fans, but then people send him negative stuff. And it's like, that is going to happen. But, I mean, the best way to respond to it is just to be strong. And it's like, you may think that, you know, you got to, you got to give those haters a piece of your mind, right? But... You can't stoop down to their level. You know, you've got to be above them. You have to, you know, show everybody that you're stronger than that. I mean, look at Justin Bieber. I mean, he's been getting hate for five years now, but he's he's been above those haters, and he hasn't let he hasn't let anything get to him. And that's why he's such an inspiration to all of us guys that are trying to make it out there. Because while we have fans, we're also going to have people that are negative, and it's just like you got to roll with it. Let's talk about the business side of things. When it comes to YouTube, do you think getting more views on YouTube affects the sales on iTunes? Definitely. I feel like YouTube is a great platform for getting your music out, now, out there. Now here's the thing about YouTube though, is have you ever noticed where you're like watching a YouTube video and all of a sudden your phone turns off and the, phone, and the video stops playing? Yeah. Yeah, that's a big problem and on iTunes you can just buy the song for a dollar or a dollar twenty nine and and you get that song whenever, wherever, on any device. And YouTube, you know, you gotta go to the link, you gotta find the link, you gotta pull up the video, you gotta 
wait for all the ads to load. I know I've got advertisement problems on my video sometimes, and it's just like, you know, I think iTunes is just, if you get a lot of views on YouTube, you're going to get a lot of buys and purchases on iTunes, because if people like the song, they're going to go out there and buy it. So I, th I think that's my, that's my take on it. Do you think it affects sales sometimes, whether, so if they look at your video, but they don't buy it on iTunes, because they can just replay it all the time? Yeah, that, that's something that you can consider, but I think at the end of the day, fans that really are there for you will, will buy your song. I mean, it's a dollar investment, and honestly, I, I feel like, I posted this once on Instagram, it's like, people are willing to, to pay five bucks for a cup of coffee that, make, that takes like minutes to make, can only be used once, right? And people aren't willing to pay a buck for music that takes years of practice and you know thousands of dollars to record and can be used forever so it's like in my opinion I think people kind of understand that and that whole aspect of things is going to get you to buy those songs because I know when I find a song that I like on YouTube I buy it on iTunes because you know that's supporting the musician. That's awesome. Thank you so much Reed. You're no problem. This was awesome. N now since you're a singer and I Girl, can you serenade me? That magic woman put a spell on my eye. That body moving girl, you got to be mine, oh mine. Well, I confess I'm not impressed with other S tonight. It's only you, it's only you that I like. She makes me beg for more. Whoa, baby, have mercy on me. Why don't you tell me your name? They say you're out of my league, but you've been driving me crazy. Maybe, lady, I got something you need. Baby, have mercy on me. I'm Juliana, and I'm here at Yummy Berry, and you're on the scene with S18 Scene. That's all for this episode of S18 Scene. Hope we made you hungry. See you guys next time on the scene. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. Like I said, I don't think James got this. Need some help, James? I'm still warming up. I'm not, not there yet. Just warm up still. Are you sure about that, buddy? Clockwork. I, I'm just going to go into a short coma, then after that, I'll be good again. I got you. Well, let me know if you need some help. I got your back.